Hey, good morning, everyone. Just want to just thank you for just uh, joining us for another um, Sunday sit down, another podcast. I'm so excited. Another Sunday morning. Uh, my name is um, Pastor Desmond uh, Wedderburn, Calvary Cross's Church, right out here in Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York City. <clears throat> And I'm just so excited for just another Sunday. And as you know, that we are we are we are just so prepared to hear from God and what God is saying in His Word. And um, love to have you join me um, to hear what God is saying this morning. And so, if you would turn with me in your Bibles or on your tablet or on your phone, whatever that you have as a Bible, um, let's turn to Malachi chapter three, verse six. <clears throat> Malachi chapter three, verse six, and it reads as follows. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, um, O sons of Jacob are not consumed. Um, for title I'd like to lift up today, the faithfulness of God, the faithfulness of God. Let us pray. Uh, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I just thank you, God, for another great morning. I pray, God, that you will speak to us, Lord, in our hearts and um, what heaven has to say um, uh, this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. The faithfulness of God. <clears throat> We know that as we as we live our lives, we can see that God is always faithful. There is never a time that since I have known God in all my twenty all my twenty four years that God has not showed up and showed out for me. Countless testimonies, countless times, and one of the things that I love about God within His faithfulness is that God He does not change. He does not change who he is. He's always a God from, from the beginning to the end. You know, in Revelation chapter one, I believe the Lord himself says that he is the almighty and he's the alpha and the omega. Anyone that you have heard that have had experiences with God um, no, um, will tell you that God, he does not change, right? There are things that God cannot do. I know God can do everything. And we always talk about that. But there are things that God cannot do, right? God cannot go against his character. And God would always, God would always remain faithful that he does not, he does not change who he is, right? And I'm so glad that he is that way. I'm glad that he doesn't change, that he is always going to be the same person no matter what. Um <clears throat> Yesterday, I had the opportunity of um, going to New Jersey and um, and attending my my um, my pastor, my spiritual father, who had passed away a few weeks ago. Um, his memorial service. I was not able to attend the funeral because that was in South Carolina, and I just couldn't get down there in time. Where he's all of his family and stuff. They're all from those that area in the southern part of the United States, southern eastern part of the United States. But where he pastored for many years was in a small town called Bloomfield, New Jersey. And I, that's where I was baptized. And that's where I, he was my pastor. And even years later, when I first started my ministry in Brooklyn, my my home church, Union Baptist Church in, in uh, Bloomfield, New Jersey, they ordained me and released me for the ministry. And so he was 99 when he passed away, right? And um, and so it was great to just go and see the family and hang out at the church. Uh, it was just like old times. I saw friends from high school that I haven't seen in so long. I saw people that remember me when I was 11 or 12 years old, when I first came to this country in the community when I when I when where I lived in Bloomfield. It was just such great memories. And just last night and yesterday at the memorial service, everyone were, was given, you know, their memories and thoughts about Reverend Thompson. And one of the things that I, that I, as I was listening to all of the stories um, that people were saying, there was something that popped up in my spirit as I was listening. And I also gave my, you know, my two minutes 
um, <laughs> um, you know, speech and stuff, reflections. But there's one thing that as everyone was coming up and saying different things, I, I heard the word of God was saying to me, consistency. And that <clears throat> everyone was saying how my pastor, my spiritual father, Reverend Thompson, um, was consistent. That there was never a time that, you know, someone would, would call him and he would pick up the phone when he can, or he always was always there. And then I began to reflect as the people were talking about this great man of God, I, I began to also reflect on God and that, <clears throat> and that God began to speak to my heart about consistency, right? That, that God, he doesn't change who he is, right? From, from the first day that I've known God, God has been the same person that he's always been. You know, it's so great when you have a friend that you know that no matter what goes down, that you can count on them, right? That God doesn't, he doesn't change for any season. He, he, he remains who he is, right? Hebrews chapter three, Hebrews chapter six, verse eight, 13 to 18 says this. For when God made a promise to Abraham because he could not, he could swear by no greater. He swore by himself saying, surely blessings, I will bless you and multiplying, I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise for men indeed swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is for them <clears throat> and end and all disputes. Verse 17 says, thus God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel confirmed by an oath that by two immutable things, which is that God is impossible for God to lie. We must have strong consolation, right? The word immutable means unchanging over time or unable to be changed, right? Unchangeable. And so as I was going through the scriptures um, this morning, as I was reflecting what to, what to talk about, what God was leading me, as God was leading me, there are three things that I saw regarding the immutability of God or the unchangingness of God, the first of which is consistency. The first one is the consistency of his character, right? That God's character will always remain the same, that God is so consistent that who God is will always be, he will always be that person, right? God has always, always, I've always been so confident to approach God no matter how I feel, right? That God made me so confident to approach him no matter what I have done, no matter what I, how I felt, and God is always going to be there, right? God is always gentle. He's always so kind, right? He's always such a comforter, right? He's such a wonderful counselor. There's many times that I've messed up. There's many times that I've just said, I don't know if God can, I don't know if God, well, he's going to forgive me, but I feel shame. I feel guilt. I feel terrible. And every time I try to make up my mind not to talk to God because God, I can't believe I've sinned against you again. God, I can't believe like um, I feel so terrible for what I've done. But every time I went back to God, he's always been so gentle. He's always been so kind. He's always been so welcoming. He's always been so inviting. And um, he's always been so such a, a wonderful comforter that God is so consistent in his character, Right? As I was hearing so many people talking about Reverend Thompson, that the things that they were saying about him, about his character, is so true that I can attest to that as well, right? And that not only is God such a wonderful counselor, that he's a, he's a comforter and he's so kind and gentle, but he's, he's truthful and he's honest. If you don't want to know the truth, don't ask God, <laughs> Right? God will always be honest with you. He will not sugarcoat it. He will he will be he will be true he will be so loving, so truthful in love, right? 
Um, Titus, in the book of Titus, one chapter 1, verse 2, it says, In the hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised long <clears throat> ages ago. Right? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? Numbers, the book of Numbers 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent, nor he um, has he said and, and will not he do it, all right, or basically won't he do it, or has he spoken and he will not make it good, all right? One more says that James chapter 1 verse 17 says that, Every good thing giving, everything, every good thing given, and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting of shadow or shifting shadow. That God, He is going to be honest with you. If you ask God a question, He will always be honest with you every single time because that's who He is. And I can tell you that. There are people in my life, there are a few people that I can go to, and I know that they're going to be honest. Why? Because they love me, right? That there has to be a consistency, right, in our character as we, are, as we call ourselves followers or disciples of Jesus, right? That, you know, that the, what we stand on has to be consistent, Right? If we're going to be gentle, well, let's be gentle with others, right? If we're going to be kind, well, let us be kind. If we're going to be truthful, well, let us be truthful, right? If we're going to be, um, if we're going to be, um, if we're going to, um, counsel people, well, let's counsel them and not condemn them. <clears throat> Let the Spirit of God use us to convict people's hearts, right? That there has to be a consistency in our character. Because guess what? There are other people that are watching every single move that you make, right? And if you are consistent in your character in God, people will unanimously, if you're not consistent, people will talk about you anyway, right? But one of the things when I first became a pastor, um, or just even a believer in God, right? That I wanted to be consistent, I wanted to be consistent in who, in who I was in God. And when God had called me to be a leader, a pastor, one of the first things I said to God was that, God, I want your heart. I want to have your heart, God, because I know that if I have your heart, right, then I know that I can be consistently honest with people that I'm, that I'm going to serve, that I can be consistently gentle um, that I can be consistently kind, right? I can be consistently hopeful among the people that you you've, you have sent me to serve, God, but not only for the people, God, but also for myself. That it is so important for us to be consistent in our character, right? That we cannot be wishy-washy. We got to be, you know, there are times that we are going to go through stuff, right? There are times that we are going to be down, yes, but even in the midst of what you're going through, your character should still remain the same because it's identifiably who you are. And as I was listening to people talking about my pastor and their pastor as well, my spiritual father, um, it reminds me of God, that God has been consistent from the first day since I've met him for 24 years that I can always be confident to go back and just approach God no matter what I have done. And God wants you to always approach him. There is nothing that God can't handle, right? There is nothing that God cannot handle. And there's nothing that, and I never want you to feel as though that you cannot approach God because of something in your life that you have done. God will never condemn you, but he will convict you, all right, because, because God um, loves you. You are his child, and we and God is also our friend. Number one, consistency in in uh, in our character, right? Secondly, not only did I see as people were talking, and I was thinking about God. Not only did I see a consistency 
um, of character in his of his character, right? But I saw also a commitment for our um, completeness. That God wants us. God is so committed for us to be whole. Yes, there are times that we're going to be broken, but God is so committed, right, for our completeness, not only in our physical body, for us to be physically well, not only in our spiritual body, that we will be spiritually whole, but also that God is so um, committed to our completeness as we walk our, as we walk our Christian life in this world, Right? That God is committed to the promises that he has spoken over your life, right? I remember many times that I would go to God and I would be so discouraged. I just want to give up. Yes, even being a pastor, you know, it's so difficult at times. It's the most rewarding thing, but sometimes because you're on the front line and, you know, trying to do things the right way, you know, you're concerned about, you know, the people that God has called you to shepherd, that God has called me to shepherd and, you know, and to be accountable also to others and things like that. There's many times that I just want to give up. Things just sometimes just don't work out the way that I think it should. And I am just shattered at times. I am so discouraged, right, that, that there's times that I literally would go in my bed and pull the covers over my head, wishing it to all go away, right? Or maybe I can go to sleep and I wake up and stuff will just vanish. Stuff that's going on in your life that, that, is, that, is, that is a nightmare. Things that's going on in your life that is such a, um, such a hindrance to you, right? And there's times that I just want to give up, Right? And every time that I go to God, he encourages me. God always says to me, I will not allow you to fail. God is more um, more enthusiastic about your encouragement than you are. That's a fact. God is so much more enthusiastic about your well-being than you truly are. That's a fact. There's many times that I just don't want things to work out. I don't know. I want things to work out, but at what cost? But God is saying that, listen, no matter what is going on, that I'm going to be committed for your completeness in all areas of your life, right? That God is committed to see this thing through. God is not going to give up in mid-flight or mid-stride with you. No, God is going to see that God is going to be there from the beginning to the end of the process, right? Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. What does that mean? Until the day of Christ Jesus? That's the end of time, right? When the Lord, when he comes back at the end of when everything is over, God is saying that he will be there all the way to the end. Even Jesus himself, the Lord himself, when he was on the cross, he said that it is finished, right? That no matter how you cannot exhaust, right, the commitment of God for your completeness, you cannot exhaust that. That is inexhaustible because God is always going to be there. He's always going to tell you that he's committed to your success. He's committed to seeing this thing really work out, right? Psalms 138 verse 8 says this, The Lord will accomplish what concerns me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, is everlasting. Do not forsake the works of your hands. God is number one, he is consistent within his character and that we should be also. That God, number two, he is he 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 is committed to our completeness. That <clears throat> if you choose to give up, that's really on you. But God hasn't given up on you at all. 
that he is still there to welcome you. He is still there, you know, to say you can you can do it. He is your biggest cheerleader. Like, you know, I've always said that I'm, a, I'm such a fan of God, right? When I look at the heavens, when I look at the birds, when I look at the animals, when I look at the trees, when I look at other people's smile, when I look at the fact that he created me, I'm just like, I'm such a fan of God. When I look at the oceans and the seas and, you know, and just the, 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 the breeze, because I'm from Jamaica and we have a beautiful country. <clears throat> the, 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 uh, the, 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 um, the beaches and the sceneries and stuff. I'm just in awe at times, right? At, at the beauty. If you go to South America, you will see, you know, the beautiful Amazon and, and, and the animals and stuff like that. If you, you can go to the North Pole and see, you know, Alaska and see the Northern Lights, what it's called. You, you can go anywhere in the world and see beauty. I'm just in <clears throat> awe of the majesty of God, the way that he created angels and the beauty of how God does things. But guess what? As much as I'm a fan of God, God is a bigger fan of us. That's right. God is such a fan of us that he decided to die on the cross for us. What? How many people in your life is really just like, let me just go on this cross real quick. Let me just catch that bullet for you real quick. You know, God, he had a plan to come here because he loves us so much, right? That he's committed for us, committed to us all the way to the end that he went to the cross, right? That God is committed to our completeness, right? That's number two. And the third one is that <clears throat> I love to see God's composure in crisis. That, that God will calm your storms, that he is in the midst of your storms, that God, he is a definition of composure in crisis, right? That no matter how rocky your storms are, that God, he's right in the middle of it. Remember the scripture where in the gospel where Jesus was in the back of the boat and the boat was breaking up. They were in the middle and the disciples were just like, this is crazy. We're going to die. And they look in the back of the boat and what was Jesus doing? The Lord was chilling. He was sleeping, right? And they, were, and they had to wake him up. And he spoke to the storm. And it calmed down and then they feared him even more. They said, who is this? Who is this that speaks to the weather and it does what it says? And it just shows you the character of God, uh, the commitment of God, but it also shows you the composure of who he is, right? Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven says this, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Um, John 14, the gospel of John 14 says, uh, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not uh, be afraid, right? That God, he is, um, that he will always be there in the midst of the storms, in the midst of what you're going through, God is always peaceful. And he wants you to have that peace in the midst of anything that might be going on in your life. Right? That there's some things that, that hit me that I'm saying this is impossible for a human being to recover from. But then God will swoop right in and that he will make everything like it never happened. It's amazing. It's a miracle. Not only is God just going to help you to weather your storms, right? But God will be with you in the fiery furnaces of your life. When things get so hot that you can't stand the heat, 
right? You know that old saying that said, can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, right? <laughs> but how many of us get out of the kitchen and we go to other parts of the house and we're still hot because maybe of things that people might be saying against us, maybe, you know, of things that is coming against in our lives, that we are such under pressure that the heat is on, that we are on a hot seat, you know, situations or whatever, right? That sometimes you feel as though that you are going to be engulfed by, you know, a flames, flames of fire, you know, the fire from things going on in your life that you can't find no peace, you can't find no shelter, you can't find um, any comfort in anywhere you go. No matter where you go in your house, no matter where you go outside, you go to your job, you, you are always just um, um, in the heat of things. But God said that he will also stand with you in the fiery furnace, no matter what has come against your life. I remember in the book of Daniel, where there were three Hebrew boys and um, King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, um, he had made his sta a statue of himself and he commanded everybody to worship his statue. And these three Hebrew boys, they will not um, worship his statue. And word got back to Nebuchadnezzar. And so he brought them to, to him and he told him, he said, you got to bow down to me and worship me. He said, when you hear the songs, when they play the, when they when they play the cue, when they cue the music, they play the songs, that's the that's the time that for you to get down and bow down and worship me. And they told him they will not do that. And this is what they said. Verse 16 of chapter 3 of Daniel. Book of Daniel said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter, right? Um, if if that is the case, all right, answer in a matter in terms of bowing down to him, right? Our God, whom we serve, who we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and He will deliver us from your hand, O King. But if not, let it be known to you, O King that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship um, the gold image which is have set up, um, that you have set up, right? I'm going to skip down to verse 22. It says, therefore, because the king commanded was so urgent and the fiery furnace was exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these three men uh, fell down bound in the midst of the fire furnace. Verse 24 says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and, and spoke, saying to, the, to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of of the fourth is like the son of God. <laughs> Let me tell you something, right? This is one of the great stories in the Bible, and it actually happened that they were cast into the furnace, right? Because they wouldn't bow down to the, to the, to the king of Babylon, and God showed up with them in the fiery furnace, the faithfulness of God in the fiery furnaces of our lives. Right, that God will show forth who the consistency of his character, number one. Number two, the commitment for your completeness, right? And the composure within the midst of crisis and chaos that God shows up, right? You can count on it. You can take that to the bank. And then King Nebuchadnezzar, he saw them and he was so astonished that he began to praise um, the God of Israel. Because God is faithful, he commands us to be faithful as well. Not so much for us, for our well-being. Yes, that God, he is committed to our completeness, but God also wants other people to see your faithfulness in him, that when times are hard, then when you're saying, God, where are you? That you can still remain faithful because God is faithful, right? That when, when situations are not working out and you have no hope whatsoever, that, you know, in Romans chapter 4, it says that 
Abraham believed in hope against hope. That God wants you to believe in hope against hope. When it looks like nothing is going to work out, God is saying, still trust me, still believe in me, still have hope in me, because, because the faithfulness of God will show up. And when it shows up, it's going to blow your mind that it's going to bring astonishment to other people around you. That is the faithfulness of God, that God will will show forth the consistency of his character, his commitment for your completeness, that God is committed to your success. And then God will show you what real composure is in the midst of your crisis. Just continue to trust God regardless of what you're going through, because God, he will not change who he is. That he is going to remain the person that fell in love with you and that he wants you to fall in love with him too. Amen? Amen. So the faithfulness of God today, let that continue to be your theme and be in your heart that God will remain faithful to you um, no matter what. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, for your message, Lord. I pray, God, that whoever is out there, Lord, that um, that needs to see you, God, as you continue to be faithful, Lord, I pray, God, that they will hear from you, God. Help those that are in need, Father. Show them forth who you are, God. And help them, Lord, to see themselves as you see them, Lord God, um, in Jesus' name. Amen? Um, If you don't know God and you're going through a lot of stuff and you want God in your life, all you have to do is just say a simple prayer. You can say, dear Lord God, dear Jesus Christ, um, I can't make it on my own. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross for me. And I can't make it by myself. And I'm going through so much, God, that may you help me right now, Lord. Because, Lord, if you don't help me, I don't know how I'm going to make it. May you come into my life and help me, God. And show me what true character is, God. Show me what true consistency is, God. And show me, um, Lord, what it means, Lord, to have great composure in the midst of these things, Lord. I want these things um, in Jesus' name. If you prayed a prayer like that, just call upon God in your own special way, God will come into your life and he will show forth his character, right? He will show forth his commitment to you, right? And he will show forth his composure within the crisis of your life. Amen? Amen. Well, thank you so much again for joining us. Um, It's another Sunday morning. Um where we just call upon God just to hear from God and just to give an encouraging word. Uh, my name is uh, Pastor Desmond Wedderburn, Calvary Crosses Church, right here in Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York City. And every morning <clears throat> at um, on Zoom, 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m., sometimes a little bit longer, um, Eastern Standard Time, we are here um to pray for you, to encourage you, but also to hear what God has to say. This is our hour of power, all right? God bless, and let God be faithful in your life, and let God show you who he really is, all right? All right. Be peace. (laughs) All right. Bye-bye.